Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace. Had a really good reception for the first episode. Oh, oh no, sneeze coming. <coughs> oh goodness, oh, Lord, I came out of nowhere. Ah, anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Thank you all so much for watching. Please let me entertain you. Let's jump right in. It's really early. I just got up and drinking my coffee still. Okay. All right, alarm chain, you're up. Let's go. Okay. But still, the guys are still allowed to vote on who they want to see representing the girls, and vice versa. It's a pretty neat system. Come on, it can't be. It can't have been literally everyone. I know for a fact that I didn't vote for myself. Don't try to be cute. You didn't even vote at all. You were absent that day. Rats. Rats off to you. And yes, you got every single one of the votes. 100%. Is it even that big of a surprise? You're one of the most well-known players in Japan. Of course you, of course our guys would want to watch you play. It doesn't help that you've been slacking off in practice for the past year. I attempted to act frustrated by sighing as loudly as I could. The hope was that she'd see it and decide to take pity on me. It isn't very effective. Should I take that aside as a sign that you've resigned yourself to your fate? Yes! Great! Then it's showtime. Saya grabs me by the wrist and starts dragging me to one of the courts. <laughs> oh god, what is this <laughs> What is this music? <laughs> Just as I'm about to truly surrender to my inescapable fate, I feel a hand touching my shoulders. As I turn around, I'm greeted by the sight of Keikun's face. Hey, hey, how about we take a little breather here, okay? Mizuguchi senpai, Michimaya senpai, hasn't even changed out of his uniform yet. How is he supposed to play like this? Can't we at least give him some time to get changed? Kakesuk, you're the best! Sai stares at him. The bulging veins on her forehead makes another appearance as her brows twitch with frustration. Just when it seems that she might not budge. Ugh! Fine. Be quick about it. I don't want to have to delay this any longer than I have to. Th th thank you. I'll be right back. Flash cake and a thumbs up as a thank you. Now I just have to plot my escape. And don't even think of trying to run away. Otherwise, I'll hunt you down and make a fur coat out of your skin. On second thought. Sorry, buddy. You're locked into this. I dash towards the male locker room, trying to get this done as fast as I can. Every second I take makes Saya even more mad, and I can't risk that. Just then... Oh! Ooh. Ooh. my, oh my. Oh, let's just take a moment to absorb this. I don't even think I have to edit this. Like, not much is really showing. Got a little cheek action going on there, but that's about it. Oh man, God, he's fucking hot. Mm. I see Shuichi standing right next to his locker. His eyes just as glued to him. This is glued on me as mine are on him. For a second, what is happening really doesn't click for any of us. After all, it's not every day that someone runs into a locker room and nearly cra crashes into the lockers. Shuichi's hands are still frozen on, on the waistband of his underwear. On his underwear? Whatever it is that he's wearing, his hands are still clutching at it as if he just pulled up a mere fraction of a second before I walked in. And the entire backside of it is completely bare, especially with his standing frozen like that, giving me a perfect view of his... Uh, Ah, sorry. I turn around as fast as possible, trying to erase the image of my half-naked childhood friend from my mind. Being so self-conscious around half-naked people, I'm a failure as a Japanese person. Is this really necess? Is this really necessary? I'm not packing anything you haven't seen tons of times before. Just sh sh shut up. Ugh, I'm not usually this much of a nervous wreck around naked people, but having no time to prepare myself mentally has made me completely shocked to this sudden appearance, this sudden exposure. It had to be Shuichi of all people! I can hear him softly chuckling from behind me, probably having a lot of fun on my breakdown. I mean, something, seeing someone in their underwear inside a locker room is no big deal, and it's true that I've seen him wearing less before, no comment on that one. Oh, huh. probably in the sauna. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, nudity isn't really a big deal in Japanese culture like it is in America. But uh, I was a kid back then, and I don't really understand how embarrassing nudity is. 
In the end, I can't decide if I should make conversation, move towards my locker, or start undressing myself. I just stand frozen with my back turned away from him. <laughs> Your eyes aren't going to fall off if you look at me, you know. H have you gotten dressed yet? Nope. And I'm not going to until you turn around and look at me. What? Why would I do that? Why would you do that? Because you're freaking out and it's hilarious. C I'm gonna kill him! There, I'm, I'm looking. I can see more of you than I'd like. Oh god, did you have to be wearing a jock strap? I can see your ass. Oh, this? Looks pretty snazzy, doesn't it? It's like something you'd buy at a sex shop. Since when have you worn this kind of skimpy underwear? I'll have you know that I bought this at an athletic gear store, and it's actually pretty damn comfortable. It's great to practice in. One of my teammates recommended it to me a few weeks back, and I gave it a try. Don't I look great in it? Whatever you want to believe. You know, for someone that's complaining so much about me being half-naked, you sure seem to be interested in my crotch. Your eyes haven't left that area since you turned around. <laughs> we got preferences real quick. There we go. <clears throat> Since you turned around. Sh shut up! I I'm looking at the only area of your body that's still clothed. Mm-hmm. Sure you are. Keep telling yourself that. Shuichi turns back to his locker room, picking up a change of clothes. There. I'm dressed. You can stop freaking out now. Th thank you. God, my cheeks are so hot right now. Good thing you're not. Good thing your house is a bath. I think you'd have a meltdown if you had to shower at school. I don't doubt that. I place my tennis bag on a bench and pull out and pull out my practice clothes. For a second, I move to undress myself. I see Suichi at the, at the corner of my eye and freeze. He looks at me in confusion for a few seconds. Then realization dawns on him and he sighs. You want me to turn my back, don't you? I just nod. Suichi sighs again and turns away from me. How do you even? How do you even deal with this when you're staying at a hotel for a tournament? I don't use the hotel's bath. I look for a bathhouse in private rooms. That's kind of sad. Beats getting naked in front of a bunch of strangers. All right, you can turn around now. Shuichi turns around, turns over again as I'm just adjusting my shirt. Good thing Kay kind of swooped swooped in to, swooped in to help me. If I had left it up to Sai, she'd have forced me to play in plain school clothes. His expression turns sour when I mention Kay. So, we're ready for that? Still mad over lost time? That was my ball, and he knew it. For some reason, that completely eludes me. These two are always finding some stupid reason to fight over. I swear it's like placing a burning candle next to gasoline. The slightest thing makes it catch fire. And for the last time, let it go. It's been almost two weeks already. So itchy pouts. God, he's too childish when it comes to K-Kun. I let go when he apologizes. We both know that's never going to happen. Just drop it. Why do I have to be the one to accept to accept defeat? Because when neither of you is winning, you're both just making me miserable. Fine, fine. I'll talk to him. You don't have to be rude. Well, anyway, I have to get to practice. Talk to you later? Sure. See ya. I check my bag to make sure I have everything in order. Once I'm sure that's not, that nothing's missing, I grab my racket and head outside. As I start looking for Saya, I catch Kaykun stretching alone at a court. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Coffee time, it's coffee time. Why don't you try this coffee of mine? Oh, it's delicious. Ah, oh, delicious dark roast. Pain suddenly shoots through my skin, making me jump forward, yelping. Son of a... <clears throat> I reflexively reach down to my foot, rubbing down the spot that just got brutally assaulted by this monster woman. Sai merely leers down at me with an annoyed look on her face. What took you so long? Did you get lost inside the locker room? Sheesh. I ran into Shuichi while I was changing. Also, ow! At least she's no longer breathing fire from her mouth. She seems to have mostly calmed down. She's only just annoyed. By the way, I'm sorry I didn't tell you this before, but Kay is the one you'll be playing against. We were kind of a flight risk at the time. Just like you, he got all the votes this year. This is the first time our club has ever gotten two players with 100% of the votes. I'm really excited for this. She looks like she might start hopping in place for her excess glee. I've only played against him once, and that was a while ago, but I still can't see myself losing to him, so sorry if that sounds cocky. To be honest, I also think you'll win. But then again, this is tennis. Never put it past your opponent to win by an upset. 
You should be happy. This would be a great chance for you to practice. You'll probably play against him during the prefecturals anyway. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, practice I didn't even want to get. Such an amazing opportunity indeed. I grumble unhappily in place, still thinking of the throbbing pain in my shin. God damn it. Even if she was just playing around, she kicked way too hard. She shakes her head sideways, making an exaggerated shrug. I find your lack of enthusiasm disturbing. Really? You're crazy? You're quoting Galaxy Wars in regular conversation now? I know she's a film nerd, but there's a limit to everything. Hey, if it fits the situation, then why shouldn't I? With a big smile on her face, Saya shrugs one last time before walking away towards the umpire chair, leaving me to watch in dismay as Kun finishes his preparations. Wait, the umpire chair? She's the one that'll be overseeing the match today? Oh, this is great. Is our coach absent today again? I swear that man takes every opportunity he has to slack off. And on the first day of class, really? Deciding to think nothing more of it, I proceed to do the most basic warm-up, making sure to finish it in less than five minutes. It's not my usual warm-up routine, but then again, I don't even care about this match in the first place. I wish I was home. I don't know why I am so stuffy today. It's like my, uh, it's like allergies have gotten me just blocked up. As I make my way to the court, I can hear some of my clubmates whispering here and there, most of them sounding really excited for some reason. I guess Saya wasn't kidding when she said that people have been looking forward to this match. Damn it! why do I have such a stupid grin on my face? I'm letting the excited mood permeating the gym affect me. I see that Kaykun is waiting for me, having already finished his warm-up routine. Even though he was running around and doing stretches up until now, his clothes still look to be in pristine condition. As he sees me coming over, he flashes me a smile. How are you feeling right now? You seemed a little out of it earlier. Did Mizuguchi Senpai give you too much trouble? Even though he's referring to us by our last names while other club members are around, now that we're out of earshot of other people, he's back to calling us by our first names. Which is great, because I hate the, the excessive deference people treat me with just because I happen to be a bit older. Age is just a number, after all. Sorry, I was still half asleep earlier today. Sai gave me one hell of a kick to the shin, though, so that's jolted me awake. He seems almost amused by hearing it. He's been exposed to Saya for too long. He's not even batting he's not even batting an eye to random acts of violence. This one has already been corrupted by us. As long as you're not limping, it should be fine. I'd be wary of angering her again and if angering her again though. I'll say. Feels like I've had a few years knocked off my life expectancy. Alrighty. Saya is one scary girl when she's angry. He laughs at my remark, his normally deep voice carrying softly through the air. Okay, deeper voice, okay. He's pretty subdued most of the time, but I guess there's a certain air of refinement to him. Like, almost as if he wasn't just some average high school student. Well, since we'll be playing only one set, stamina won't be a much of a problem. How about we go at each other guns blazing from the start? Sounds good to me. How about we decide who gets who gets the first serve? Should we just flip a coin? If it's okay with you, I'd like for you to take the first serve. I know it's usually your preference, and I'd like to give it. A, I'd like you to give it a try. Um, sure. I guess I mean if you're really okay with it. I am. I think it'll be a great opportunity for me to try out a new strategy I've come up with. Now, if you don't mind, I'll stay with this side of the court. Shall we get started? I nod, wishing him good luck and heading over to my side of the court. What's up with him willingly giving me the first serve? He's got a plan. He's totally underestimating me, underestimating me, isn't he? I look over to my starting position and one of the freshmen hands me a two hands me two balls. Hands me a two balls. I what? <laughs> I guess I has rubbed him into our being our ball boys for the match, huh? I take a few deep breaths to steady myself. Once I walk onto the court, I shouldn't focus on anything but my opponent. Doesn't matter if it's a tournament match or an exhibition match. It's all still tennis in the end. And I refuse to give anything less than my all when it comes to tennis. I throw the ball into the air, moving my body as quickly as I can with a whip-like motion to hit the ball at the peak of the toss. It goes past the net and hits close to the line, a powerful flat serve that goes wide. The ball bounces quickly and swiftly, sliding past Kaykun's reach. Or at least it should have. With a swift motion, he dashes to the ball and returns it, though not perfectly. The ball doesn't go very deep and doesn't have much power behind it. If it's like if it's like this, I can handle it easily. I really like the illustration up top. That's pretty cool to show, to show how they're playing. I reach the ball and counter it, putting it as much force as I possibly can without sending it flying out of the court. The ball goes to the opposite side of the court as Kaykun is standing in right now, hitting the ground and bouncing away before he even starts running again. 15-0. 
Kaken looks down at the skid mark left on the floor by the ball, whistling in admiration. Heh, <laughs> seeing a surprise definitely makes me smile a little. The freshmen all saw, the freshmen all start talking loudly and excitedly after seeing the last rally. Shut up! Sai easily solves that problem by using her usual sunny disposition. The only problem is she almost gave me a heart attack. Looking over at Keika, and I notice him standing completely frozen, eyes wide as he stares at Saya. She quickly notices his gaze and laughs nervously. Please continue. Well, at least she regains her composure quite fast. We both walk back to our positions, Kaken taking just a bit longer to compose himself again. After knowing us for a full year, I'm surprised he's not used to Saya's personality yet. I take a moment to bask in this atmosphere. Even if I hesitated to be here right now, I have to admit that being on the court is just the best feeling ever. Once more, I shoot a flat shot, aiming for the lines. Keika dashes the ball, and although he reaches it, returns the ball into the net. 30-0. <clears throat> Keika stares at me with a troubled look on his face. <clears throat> I guess he just isn't used to a truly fast serve. There aren't many players with a lot of raw power around for him to practice against, so it's no surprise he's still not used to playing against me. I guess that's one benefit to me not playing against him so often. I repeat the same strategy once more. A flat ball with lots of power is what I excel at. Although he gets the ball with relative ease, he, mis he misjudges the timing. He returns. His return ends up going too long and flies out of the court by quite a bit. L 40-0. I can't help myself from grinning like an idiot. It just might be a little like a... Oh, good lord. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on with me. Ugh, God. It might just be a little bit of a, I might just be a little bit of a sadist because crushing an opponent always feels so satisfying. I never get sick of it. Kaken probably thought he could come up with some strategy to break my serve and asked me to serve first so he could attack and mess with my head. He probably thought that by breaking my serve he'd also break my concentration. Instead, it seems the spell has been turned against its user. Game. Michimaya. Game count three to zero. Michimaya leads. <laughs> A small crowd that's gathered around our court starts to cheer loudly once more. I just wish these guys would shut up. This is way too distracting. As for Keika, he seemed largely out of it since the end of the first game. I guess the shock of seeing his strategy failing so catastrophically has broken his concentration. He's completely abandoned his tactics and fine skills in favor of a brute force approach. Tennis is a sport where your mind is just as important as your body. If you start thinking too much about losing, your fear will cause your body to panic. Your body won't move as it normally does, and without noticing, your play becomes affected. Because of that, I managed to easily break through his serve game. And that created a downward spiral. The more he's dominated, the more he fears an eventual defeat, causing his play to worsen further and making him feel even more dominated. It's a feedback loop that you can't escape from unless you notice that you're in it in the first place. And even then, it's no small feat. Professional players struggle with this type of thing. For a high school student, this is a monumental beast all its own. Huh. I'm usually all in favor of rest breaks, but right now I wish we could play the whole match without stopping. Not because I'd like to, but because I don't want Kasuk to have the time to calm down. It might be a shitty thing to say, but I hope he stays in this slump all the way to the end of the match. Time! Nope, no point dwelling in it. I'll just get back to the court and try to get this match done as fast as I can. Hmm. Ha! Huh. This is exactly what I was hoping wouldn't happen. His eyes seem much more focused right now. I guess the small break gave him enough time to, give him, to get himself back together. I really can't afford to let my guard down. Kasuk tosses the ball high into the air, making contact with it just as it begins to drop again. There's no doubt about it that his serve has gone back to normal. I guess there's no more weakness for me to exploit. The good things in life are always short-lived after all. The ball soars over the net, making contact with the ground deep into the court. I managed to reach the ball and send it back, but I lost my balance for a second and got a, last, and got a late start on my subsequent dash. And just as I take a couple of steps toward the center of the court, Kaken immediately sends a powerful shot to the side I had been on. Not having enough time to regain my balance, attempting to change direction again makes me trip. The ball slides to the floor, bounces again on a sideways arch. I somehow managed to reach this shot, but because it stays too close to the ground, I can't make a full swing and end up lacking power. This is likely what he was going for. It seems Kaken has decided to attack my counter, which is admittedly a rather annoying strategy. Right after I return the ball to the other side of the court, he, again, shoots it to the other side of the court to make me run. If this were a three or even a full set match, it would be seriously, I would be seriously worried about my stamina. You need to practice. 
and Flash Kaken has identified the shots I'm a, I most struggle against and the ones I most want to hit. By doing that, he is aggressively looking to keep his serve by chipping away at me until I can go until he can go for a winner. In a style of tennis that emphasizes a wide variation of shots and a delicate touch is his specialty. It's thanks to this that Kaken managed to overcome his average constitution, becoming a well-known player in our region. Still, he's yet to make a breakthrough when it comes to the national competitions. Since I can't fall into a comfortable pace, I end up not being able to hit the ball as I want to, and as such, I can't put away a winner. I continue to struggle with the rally until Kasich eventually runs me out of the, runs me out of a, out of the point. Oh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there, guys. This is about another episode of Tennis Ace. We got a good bit of eye candy in this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.